on episode 439 of the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, we meet Kim Jones and discuss her book, Trick Yourself to Sleep. You can find the full show notes for this episode at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 439. Have you decided you're ready to make a change? To reclaim your health and fitness, the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast is here for you. I'm your host, Alan Meisner. I'm an NSAM certified personal trainer with a specialization in corrective exercise and fitness nutrition. Let me be your coach as you find your way on your health and fitness journey. All right, let's go. This episode of the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast is sponsored by SaveTheChildren.org. COVID-19 has been devastating for many of us, but no one is more affected than children. It has left many children without caregivers, out of school, and exposed to violence and exploitation. We used to be winning the battle on poverty, but now poverty is rising, especially for children. Save the Children believes every child deserves a future. In the United States and around the world, they work every day to give children a healthy start in life, the opportunity to learn, and protection from harm. With your support, Save the Children can help children in unsafe households, and help support distance learning in the face of school closures. Here are some ways your support can make a difference. $10 can nourish an out-of-school child in need for one day, including breakfast, lunch, and dinner. $35 can provide educational toys and activities to engage eager out-of-school learners. $50 can deliver essentials to keep kids learning while out of school, like books, activities, and supplies. Go to savethechildren.org forward slash save kids to help save the children in this time of unprecedented need. Hello, and thank you for being a part of the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast. I'm really glad you're here today, and I'm really excited about our conversation because as you may or may not know, sleep is one of my favorite topics. That's one of my favorite things in the world. Uh, When I get enough sleep, I feel great, and this is a great, great episode to help you get more sleep. Before we get into it, though, I wanted to take a minute to invite you to our Facebook group at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash group. We have weekly challenges, inspirational and informative posts, and a whole lot of fun. Come join us at 40plusfitnesspodcast.group. I also wanted to tell you that we actually have a new uh, podcast review. It's been a little while since I've gotten a review, uh, but I do want to read this one. And if you want to leave a review, please do. You can usually do that through your podcast app. I'm going to go ahead and read this. This is from Marge in Sacramento. These podcasts are excellent. They cover myriad and fascinating topics, all related to fitness over the age of 40. I learn things from each one I listen to. They are amazing. Thank you, Marge. I really appreciate that. And if you, again, you want to leave a podcast review because I, I love getting them, go to your app. And usually on most of the apps, there's going to be a place for you to click review, rate and review. Love those ratings and reviews. So please just take a few minutes to do that right now. Our guest today is a freelance journalist specializing in health and well-being. She's a member of the Guild of Health Writers and writes for various national women's magazines and newspapers in the UK, including the Daily Mirror, the Sunday Express Magazine, Women's Weekly, Tesco Magazine, and Women and Home. With no further ado, here's Kim Jones. Kim, welcome to 40 Plus Fitness. Oh, hello. How are you? I'm, I'm really good. And today we're going to talk about one of my favorite things, <laughs> sleep. <laughs> uh, you wrote the book, Trick Yourself to Sleep, 222 Ways to Fall and Stay Asleep from the Science of Slumber. Um, and going through all of those 22, 222 of them, I would say I probably knew maybe half of them. So there's mm-hmm. a lot in this book for someone to try if they're struggling with their sleep. Good. I'm glad to hear that you've not heard of all of them because I think that was the whole reason I wrote the book. There's just so much out there you can do to help yourself sleep. It's not necessarily doing something just before bed. It can be doing things all through the day that can help set the scene for a perfect night's sleep. So, you know, there are a lot of things you can do. So my book, I hope people will be able to dip into, try, test out a few things and find some new ways to get that perfect night's sleep. Excellent. Now, one that I hadn't really thought of, obviously as an adult, but it's something we do with our children, is rocking. Mm, yeah, talk of course. about why rocking helps us sleep and then a couple of ways that we can 
incorporate rocking into our lives, you know, because I'm, yeah. I'm not going to get my wife to do it. I, I weigh a little bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's the problem. I mean, it's obviously something we all do to our babies and our children when they're small enough to do it. If you, you naturally, it's innate, you naturally rock them to sleep. It's soothing. And, you know, researchers have wanted to find out if the same sort of uh, feelings can, the same drowsy feelings can be experienced by adults who rock. So um, a University of Geneva study, for example, uh, they monitored people, adults, who took a nap in a rocking bed, which was like a hammock, and they found that they did, in fact, fall asleep faster. Uh, But what was really, really interesting was that they monitored their brainwave activity, and they found that in those people who were rocking in this hammock, there was an increase in the type of brainwave activity that's associated with deep sleep. So it actually should suggest that rocking motions can synchronize your brainwave activity to that associated with sleep. So how do we do it? Like you say, you're too big to be rocked by anybody. Um, But of course, there's the good old rocking chair. They are coming back into vogue at the moment, especially with nursing mothers. They um, lots of these chairs are now being sold. You might be able to find one in an antique shop. Um, but they well, are no, no. They actually, they actually have mm. them. If, if you live in the southeast, I think most of them are in the southeast. It's a, a store called a Cracker Barrel, ah, and they have okay. these rockers outside for, for when they have their long waits. If someone wants to sit out in the rocker, uh, and they mm. actually do sell those rocking chairs. So if, if you're anywhere near the southeast, uh, you're going to be able to find a rocking chair at um, at the Cracker Barrel. Perfect. Well, there you go. There you go. So uh, if you can't get hold of a rocking chair, apparently now there are rocking beds commercially um, being developed as we speak, um, I think in the US actually. Um, and they are sort of, a, uh, they fit onto your existing bed and they do actually have that beautiful slow rocking motion. Again, they're quite expensive, so they might not be something you can get your hands on um, quite easily. But um, just simply, uh, rocking on your feet before bedtime can be relaxing. Uh, so it's very, very simple. You just, um, before bed, just stand uh, with your sort of feet to about shoulder width apart and just shift your body weight onto your heels. So that's backwards. So your toes lift off the floor and then shift your weight onto your toes so that your heels rock off the floor. And if you just continue rocking back and forth really slowly, breathing deeply as you do so, you are setting off that rocking motion in your body and you are hopefully then synchronizing your brainwave activity into uh, that associated with deep sleep. And you've got the added advantage of stimulating acupressure points on your feet, which can calm and relax you as well. So that's an easy way to uh, do a rock, uh, some sort of rocking motion before bed and uh, just then very calmly after you've finished rocking on your heels for a while and uh, doing a quick uh, stretch, then get into bed and hopefully it'll have calmed you down. Yeah. And that, and that's one thing, you know, at the end of a workout, you know, we, a lot of times if we're doing group training or you've done any group training, uh, they'll finish up with some stretching. And it's mm-hmm. always kind of that, just that relaxing, you're laying on the floor, you're stretching out. Um, so stretching and yoga actually are protocols that could help us sleep better. Could you tell us about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yoga, myself, I've I've not sort of ever been a huge yoga convert because I, th- I think before I tried it, I always thought it was difficult. You had to be really flexible. But of course, that's totally not true. You can do so many yoga moves in the comfort of your own home, which are really easy and they don't require much flexibility. And one yoga move that uh, is constantly mentioned when it comes to uh, helping you sleep, nearly every yoga teacher I've talked to has told me that this one is the one to try. It's called Legs Up the Wall. And it's thought to trigger your parasympathetic nervous system that's the part of your nervous system that helps slow your heartbeat it helps you to relax and you know slow, drop your blood pressure slow everything down it's really simple and you don't have to be flexible at all to do it so you simply i don't know if you know this one but you just sit on the floor with either your left or your right hip against the wall turn your body keeping your bottom close to the wall then you bring your legs up on to the wall and uh, 
don't worry too much about um, how sort of how much your knees are bending. If it's more comfortable, you can keep your knees bent because some people don't can't actually straighten their legs completely against the wall. You can use pillows next to the wall or under your hips to support your back. It's got to be comfortable for you to be in this position. Basically, you are lying there with your legs up against the wall for a few minutes, breathing deeply, and it's really, really thought to somehow calm the nervous system and you can do it in bed against the headboard if that's at all feasible as well Uh, but that's definitely one pose which I think you've got to try before anything if you are going to do some yoga Uh, and then do you want me to talk about any other poses like Uh, absolutely yeah yeah the the more the merrier (laughs) (laughs) great stuff so child's pose if you are a yoga fan you'll know this one quite well but again it's uh it's one that uh, is supposed to relax your body and mind very very quickly but it's um, you you don't have to be too flexible again and you can use lots of cushions and that kind of thing to help you so you just first get into a kneeling position So you're sitting on your heels, your knees either together or hip distance apart, whatever you feel more comfortable in. And then roll the top half of your body forward. And if you can go as far forward uh, until your forehead rests on the bed or the floor, wherever you're doing this particular exercise, with your arms outstretched in front of you, that's fine. But if you can't get your head to rest on the floor, a pillow, I can't. I'm not that flexible, I'm afraid. You just rest your head on a pillow. So hold the pose for as long as it's comfortable and uh, probably for about a maximum of three minutes. And just breathe slowly as you do. You'll feel your body lengthening. You'll feel all your muscles sort of getting, um, uh, just get, getting out of that position you've been in all day. Uh, and it's a nice, relaxing uh, easy one but uh, there are even there, there's an even easier one which I like which is just to simply dangle there like a rag doll so again it, this is one that uh, apparently in yoga any head below heart pose or uh, you know, it's called an inversion in yoga is thought to calm and relax the nervous system so anywhere where you're putting your head below where your heart usually is then that is thought to really, really calm you down. So you, again, with this one, you simply, you don't need much flexibility at all. You don't need really much strength or balance to hold the pose, but it can help release the tension and help you wind down. So if you want me to just quickly explain how it's done, you simply stand, start with your arms raised over your head and then fold forward from your hips, reaching down towards your toes and then Just hang there like a rag doll, just as far as you can, no further. Don't try to push it. Just allow all your muscles and your hair to hang heavily down and you'll feel the tension release from your shoulders. So just shake your arms loosely back and forth, just like a rag doll. Soften your knees if you need to and just dangle there as long as you feel comfortable, closing your eyes and breathing slowly and just letting your thoughts drift away. One important thing to do as well is to let out a big sigh because research shows that the actual act of sighing while you're doing this particular exercise can relieve stress and muscle tension. So there's a real reason why we sigh. It is actually to release all that tension. So that's a nice one to do. And if you don't want to do it while you're standing up, if you feel like you just want to do it when you're sitting down, you can do that at the edge of the bed as well. Simply fold forward and hang like a rag doll at the edge of the bed and then just get into bed afterwards. And hopefully that will have uh, sort of loosened you up a bit and uh, got you more calm and relaxed. Yeah. Stretching seems to always do that for me. It's uh, I just don't, mm. anytime I've ever done a class or whether it was yoga or just any other kind of fitness class, uh, you get to the, the um, stretching part and it's, Actually, sometimes yeah. hard to not fall asleep on the floor. <laughs> ah, that's good because you know studies really have shown that stretching does help give you better sleep. So it doesn't matter what stretches you do, as long as they're not really um, uh, you're not forcing anything. Yeah. You know, obviously hurting yourself. But yeah, you're right. They they will just calm you down. And like you know, the science shows it. Studies show that women actually who did a regular stretching uh, routine for a few months they reported better sleep afterwards. And, and things like stretching your legs can help. I don't know if you um, suffer leg cramps at all in bed or um, restless leg syndrome. That's something that really haunts a lot of people. 
uh, they can't get to sleep with it. But if you do lots of leg stretches, that can help with those sort of problems as well. And just generally sort of opening your chest as well. You know, we've all been in that position. If you're anything like me, you spend hours on the computer every day. If you just open your chest before bed, that just means standing up straight and bringing your arms slightly behind you so that you, you know, you're sort of correcting the rounded shoulders position that you might have been in all day. That's a nice one to do as well. That sort of uh, loosens everything up because you don't want to get into bed with muscles that are tight and uh, full of all the stress and tension that you've been living with through the day. Yeah, so definitely, like you say, like you do at the end of a workout, a nice stretch before bed really sort of loosens everything up. Let's take a short break here because I have something I have to share. I'm starting a second round of Eight Weeks to Well. This small group personal training, limited to 10 people, is designed to help you lose weight while gaining slash maintaining muscle. The results from the first round have been amazing. With access to me through group calls, one-on-one calls, email, and the 40 Plus Fitness app, you'll have all the support you need to lose the weight you want. I'm very proud of what this program is doing for people just like you. You can join now at the early bird pricing. Go to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 8W2WP. That's 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 8W2WP. But hurry. There are limited spots, and the early bird pricing will end soon. Now, I'm I'm a big fan. Anything you want to change, uh, a journal is is just your, your best friend, uh, and you have right. several, um, t- you know, acts or, or tactics in the book that we can use a journal for. So, do you mind going through a few of those and why they're valuable? Yeah, of course. So, um. Really important to uh, sort of get sort of worries out of your head before you get into bed. So a really good idea is to uh, sort of schedule a time uh, before bed. It's quite a quite way before bed, actually, because you don't want these things particularly on your mind. So about six o'clock, schedule 15 minutes, which is called your worry time. And that's where you sit down with a pen and paper And you write out anything that's bothering you. And then you also write out some solutions, possible solutions to the problem. So, you know, this, it could be anything from, oh, uh, I know there's going to be a big bill coming in. And then you might want to write on the uh, possible solutions. Okay, we're going to have to cut back on this or that. But it sort of frees your mind from any niggles uh, that might be there when you go to bed. Uh, and and it sort of stops you worrying in bed so for example if a worry does come into your mind at bedtime you can actually say to yourself actually I'm not going to worry about that now because that'll be in my worry time tomorrow it's scheduled for that 15 minute slot tomorrow that's when I'll sort it out that's when I'll worry about it so it's a it's sort of a way of putting your worries to bed early if you like and again writing a to-do list is really good I mean there's been even been studies on this where uh, scientists have looked at a group of people who wrote out a detailed to-do list uh, and then they looked at another group who wrote out a list of things they'd completed tasks they'd completed in the last few days and it was actually the group who'd written out their to-do list before bed who fell asleep quicker And the more detailed the list they'd written, the quicker they fell asleep. And again, it's the whole process there of offloading on paper things that have to be done. It helps free your mind from that responsibility and stops that list from growing round and round in your head when you are in bed. So that's a good thing to do. Write all your worries and write your to-do list before bed. Um, And then another nice thing to do is uh, think of good things, write down five good things every night that have happened to you in the day. So it can be simple things such as getting a text from a friend or eating a great meal, just writing down things that are good in your life or something that you're grateful for. Again, studies, uh, scientific studies have shown that writing these sort of a gratitude journal uh, or even just thinking about what's good 
and not bad in your life can help you fall asleep faster and longer. So another nice reason to do that. And then um, keeping a sleep diary, I think uh, you, you might have heard of that, where you, I think you mentioned there, is it, you know, it's a good way to find out what you're maybe doing wrong in the day that's uh, making you sleep badly. So in the book, I've got details of how you can do that, you know, just buy a nice notebook and then online you can find really good sleep diary templates where you can uh, copy that out into your book and you fill in every day sort of uh, what happened, what time you went to bed, what time you woke up, how many times in the night you might have woken. And then there's another section to put in what you ate and drank and when and what exercise you had, whether you napped and what you did in that hour before bed. So at the end of every week, you can examine your diary for any patterns and you can see uh, what's maybe helping or hindering your sleep in that way. So uh, that's a nice way to sort of keep track of what you're doing and what you can make better. Absolutely. Yeah, so, yeah, lots of ways to sort of just writing things out on paper. I think, actually, I'd prefer to do it with a pen and paper myself. I think it sort of goes in better than doing anything on uh, the computer. Well, one of the advantages of doing it, on, I mean, I do my to-do list is on my computer. As far yeah. as the rest of it, you know, journaling on paper, uh, you're doing this, you can do this by candlelight because we know blue light, computers, screens, mm. not necessarily things we need to be doing the, the last hour before we go to bed. So if you're sitting yeah. there, and particularly one of the things you had in there was just to write down a reminder. So if you were turning out the light and getting ready to go to bed and all of a sudden it was Oh, boom! I've I've got to meet someone mm-hmm. at seven o'clock, you know, or I've got to go do this thing. I need to write myself a reminder, or I need to, you know, or you're going to stay awake all night thinking about it. So it's just, you know, Absolutely. your alarm is set when it needs to be set. You know, you're going to be up, but just the reminder so that okay, I know I have to do this thing, uh, or I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, so just getting that off your chest. And if you again, if you get on your computer or your phone to do that, then you're you're dismantling some of the things we've done with uh, the other work we've been doing absolutely. before we go to bed. yeah absolutely that's right so keep that pen and paper by the bed don't whatever you do like you say don't pick up your phone to put it on your list there because that's going to all that light the the blue light coming from your phone is going to stop you from producing melatonin which is your sleepy hormone so just literally you know scroll on that piece of paper in the dark i mean it might look like a complete mess in the morning but i'm sure <laughs> You'll you'll know what it says, but that's what you should do. Keep keep the lights off and just scroll it on this. You're giving your mind permission to forget about it, so it's not going to stop you from falling asleep. Yeah, no, I I have this client, and uh, you know I go through a lot of the protocols with her, uh, but she's blind, so it's it's obviously you know it's the red light blue light thing is not something that she can really do. Um, you know, we've mm-hmm. talked about her meds. She's everything she's taking shouldn't be a problem. Uh, she's got her hormones pretty much in check for a woman her age and what, what she's gone through in life, but she still really, really struggles with sleep. And from a health and, and wellness perspective, it's, it's really bringing her down. Um, mm. What's some advice that you would give to someone who pretty much feels like they've just about tried everything, but still struggling to fall asleep? Yeah, it's it's not nice, is it? And it happens to a lot of us. I think that the problem is sometimes we get into a vicious circle where, you know, we've had trouble with sleeping and then we walk into our bedroom and as soon as we walk in, we associate that room with worry and sleeplessness and it's just an awful sort of, it's almost waiting to happen. You know, you walk in, you think, oh no, I, I just know I'm not going to be able to sleep and it, it's sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy really. Um, but, uh, you know, sometimes anxiety can keep it's awake that 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 whole thing of feeling that we well, there's something wrong with us why can't we sleep and so, um, cognitive behavioral therapy is really good uh, at helping tackle the the sort of mindset uh, you have for sleep and there is a particular branch of cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia cbti which is really helpful for helping reduce that anxiety uh, we feel and it involves recognizing all the negative and exaggerated thoughts we have about sleep and then challenging them and then replacing them with more realistic um uh, really telling us that it's normal everybody wakes up at certain points in the night but we do all have the capacity to sleep so you can uh, actually try you can get hold of therapists who can help you with that obviously or you can try it yourself 
by uh, making sort of a thought record. And that involves, again, getting a nice book that you feel happy writing in and sort of writing out your thoughts and sort of what maybe you could say the thought I'm having about sleep at the moment might be, you know, I'm lying in bed. I really can't sleep. Oh, gosh, I need eight hours tonight. Why can't I sleep? Is something wrong with me? And then you write how the thought makes you feel. And then obviously that thought will make you feel anxious or panicky or hopeless. Uh, and then you write a more realistic, balanced version of your thoughts underneath where you might say something like, OK, well, it would be nice to get that solid eight hours, but not everybody really needs eight hours to function well. There's plenty of evidence out there to support the belief that, you know, people can get by on six or seven hours. So there's lots of ways to to do this particular exercise but my book does explain quite easily how to do it and and it, eventually if you start challenging all negative thoughts in this way not only at night but even through the day if you start to recognize when you're getting into a negative thought pattern and then you try and look at it in a more sort of calm and balanced way and um, then it just becomes more of a habit that you start to challenge the thoughts and and then you actually sort of stop panicking in your mind uh, so that you know you're you're actually calming down your whole nervous system by thinking in this way. You're being kinder to yourself. Uh, you're you know sort of all the good the feel good hormones are coming out rather than the anxiety inducing hormones. So you're switching off the adrenaline in your mind, and that all can help with falling asleep in the end it takes a little bit of practice I've got to say because you know the, your initial thoughts when you're lying there tossing and turning for two hours um you, you you know not always likely to feel that way but you can train your mind to be uh, less catastrophic if you like you can you can train your thoughts to to veer away from that side of uh, feeling to a more calm and realistic side so you know maybe that's something that your client could look at yeah, because the the mind body thing is is so so huge, and anything that you're telling yourself, um, you know, it's so what's uh, was it uh, Ford who said, if you think you can, you can; if you think you can't, you, you're right. Um, you know, either way, it's something like something like that. Anyway, I butchered that, but uh, you know, w- w- what we tell ourselves is is typically going to be true unless we take the time to remap the way we think about things, the way we structure it, um, then we're, we're setting ourselves up. So I, 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 Mm -hmm. I see that, you know, and when you're getting hormone responses and the fight or flight just out of being in the bedroom, that it's, uh, (laughs) that's not how to start. That's not how to start a good night's sleep. It's really not. And there's, there's, um, another section of, um, thought called acceptance therapy, where you actually accept worrying thoughts uh, in a way that's almost, um, you know, you welcome them. There's a, a particular proponent in the UK, Dr. Guy Meadows, who, who, who I interviewed him once and he said to me, what you should do if a worrying thought enters your mind at night, you should welcome it as if it's a friend. So you should say something like, oh, hello, worry. Here you are again. How are you? And by welcoming it in that way, you are switching off the stress you're like you just said you know you are um changing your whole mindset your body reactions then become different you're not under threat so your fight or flight system's not coming on so that's another sort of way to try and change your thoughts sort of welcome those thoughts as you would a friend yeah now as I mentioned when we first started the show, I'm a huge fan of sleep and Mm -hmm. also a huge fan of of napping uh, when you need to nap and I'm I'm a regular napper, but in the book you go through and, and, and I've seen this advice several times, but it doesn't really fit the way I like to nap. So, mm-hmm. you know, as you share in the book, uh, and m- many people may know a standard sleep cycle typically lasts about 90 minutes. And so there's yeah. about four or five, depending on what school of thought you want to term things as you go through, there's light sleep, REM sleep, and then deep and deeper. But anyway, as you go through those sleep cycles, it's, you want to go through all of them. And if you're getting good sleep, that's what's happening. Uh, so mm. for me, taking a nap, I, I want that 90-minute nap because I go through a full sleep cycle and I wake up feeling really good. And if I do that early mm. enough in the, in the afternoon, um, waking up no later than, say, 3.30, 4 o'clock, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm good to go. Um, but mm-hmm. 
other people may need to nap less. Can you kind of just talk about napping and, uh, you know, yeah. the, the shorter version? Cause I've, I've done that too, you know, like <laughs> at work and you can't, they're not going to let you lay at your desk for an hour and a half. Yeah. Uh, so going yeah. out to the car and taking a quick little 20 minute snooze was, was what all the time I had. Uh, so I've done both, but I can tell you, I, they, they both have value. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, that's, this just sort of illustrates the fact that everybody's different. Everybody needs different amounts of sleep. Everybody, you know, some people can do things during the day, like have a long nap and it doesn't interfere with the nighttime sleep. Other people, you know, even if they do five, 10 minutes, that's going to inter- interfere with the nighttime. So there's no one size fits all, but the general advice is that your nap should be 10 to 20 minutes, no longer than 30 minutes, because after that you get into that uh, deep stage of sleep, which it's very difficult to wake up from. You get brain fog, you're sluggish. Um, and you know, if you can carry on and go through the whole sleep cycle like you've done, then brilliant. But like you say, not many of us have that time during the day to do that. But uh, one thing I would say is that timing of your nap is really important because between 1 and 3 p.m. in the afternoon, we experience a small drop in our core body temperature. Now, that's something that happens every night, and it acts as a signal to our brain to release melatonin, our sleepy hormone. So that drop in body temperature happens every night about 9 p.m. as dusk falls or whenever to sort of start to make you feel sleepy and It also happens at this time between 1 and 3 p.m. And if you want to work with that natural dip in your body temperature and work with your body's natural circadian rhythm, then maybe 2 p.m. would be the ideal time to have that sleep. And as I say, if you just don't want to get into, if you don't want to be woken from the deep stage of your sleep, then stick to 10 to 20 minutes and definitely no longer than 30. But yeah, it would be nice to have the 90 minute nap every day. But I don't think we've all got that uh, yeah. <laughs> luxury, unfortunately. Yeah. And, and the other thing, mm, carry on, sorry. No, go ahead. I, I just, I, I hate being woken up during my mm. deep sleep time. It just, I, I get angry, yeah. which is why I stopped using an alarm clock over four years ago. Mm. Unless I have to get up for a flight, I'm, I'm like, I'm going to use my natural rhythms and I'm going to yeah. wake up when it, it's light sleep. And I'll look at it. If, if I wake up, you know, I'm supposed to be up at six o'clock and I wake up at 530 Mm-hmm. Um, I'm up, you know, there's no sense in me trying to get another round of sleep because it's just it's yeah. not going to happen for me. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm one of those that I, I hate alarms and I hate being woken up and you can ask my wife that just don't <laughs> wake him up when he's in deep sleep. Yeah. Same, <laughs> same with my other half. Yeah. When he's, you know, do, let sleeping dogs lie, as they say, just yeah. leave them alone. <laughs> um, but there's another bonus to uh, napping during the day, because I know a lot of sleep specialists actually say, don't nap at all. It'll interfere with your natural um, drive to sleep later in the night. But I think a really good bonus side to napping is that it helps retrain your brain to realize that falling asleep can be easy because usually if you're having a nap during the day you're you're tired it's not difficult to fall asleep so you're actually telling your brain is now saying oh okay well that was easy I fell asleep so in a way it's you know it could help retrain you to sleep better at night as well cool now, again, the book has 222 ways, and there's no way we could cover all of them in a podcast. And some of them are, are really, really good. Um, we, we, like, I, like I said, I, could, I, we could, I love sleep. We could talk, I could talk about it for <laughs> hours. Uh, so this is, this is just really cool to be able to try these things out, get a journal together, start recording the things that are working for you and those that you just, they aren't, um, yeah. and find the right thing for you. Yeah, Kim, absolutely. Mm. I define wellness as being the healthiest, fittest, and happiest you can be. What are three mm. strategies or tactics to get and stay well? Okay, so I'm obviously going to say get enough exercise and move about more um, because we're all, uh, so many of us are just sitting at our desks for seven to 10 hours a day, and that's just not natural. So I definitely advise everybody to move about more and to get your exercise. It doesn't matter what sort of exercise, 
you know, as long as you enjoy it, it's got to be enjoyable for you to stick at it. So whether, you know, you like walking or tennis or whatever, just make it a regular habit. And again, you're going to help you sleep by doing that. All the research points to uh, if you are a regular exerciser, it doesn't matter if you do aerobic or a mix of aerobic and resistance training, all the science points to the fact that you're going to sleep better. Because sometimes if you go to bed and you haven't done any exercise during the day, you're not going to be tired enough to fall asleep easily. So I'd say definitely get enough exercise and move more. Personally, I also, what makes me happy is getting my daily dose of being outdoors. I think if we stay cooped up indoors all day, we're exposed to so much artificial light from our electric lights, our TVs, our iPads, blah, blah, blah. It's sort of we're ex- we're exposed to unnatural light patterns that confuses our body clock. So keep your body clock clued up by getting outside. I love being outside. Exposed to all the natural patterns of daylight and dusk helps synchronize my body clock. I just love being surrounded by nature. I'm lucky enough to live near woods and you know plenty of outdoor spaces. But no matter where you live, I think just being outside and connecting somehow, no matter how small, with nature is just so good for you good for your body good for your mind it helps you slow down uh you know listen to that bird song listen to the sound of the ocean waves walk and enjoy what's around you um and you're getting all that natural benefits of the uh, you know what what time of day it is you're you're keeping your body uh, aware of what time it is and you're um you're likely to get better sleep that way as well because your body knows when to start producing melatonin because it's getting dark or it knows when to stop producing melatonin because it's uh, daylight. Uh, and the other thing I'd, I'd say is, and this is something that I've only really uh, started doing in the last few years, is meditating. But it's not meditating in a really big way. It's not something that has to take up hours of your time. My meditation will be just literally if I if I am if I've gone to bed and I'm not falling asleep quickly, I just do a very quick meditation, which is something like the hundred steps. I just pretend I'm at the top of a beautiful mountain and I'm going counting down from a hundred, and each step I take down uh, takes me sort of lowers everything in my you know lowers my heart rate, my breathing slows, and meditation is fantastic for sleeping because actually loads of research has been done into uh, how it actually changes the structure of your brain Um, and it it sort of diminishes the concentration of grey matter in the amygdala which is that area of the brain associated with anxiety and stress and it's even found that people who meditate before bed can increase their output of melatonin the sleepy hormone so it's got to be good for you, just slowing down your breathing, slowing down your heart rate and, you know, taking yourself somewhere in your mind that's really pretty and uh, calming. So, yeah, those are my three things that I think um, can help you live a healthy life. Thank you, Kim. If someone wanted to learn more about you and learn more about the book, uh, Trick Yourself to Sleep, where would you like for me to send them? Okay, so it's published by uh, Fantastic um, The Experiment. So you can find them at theexperimentpublishing.com. They're based in New York. Um, my website's kimjoneswrites.co.uk. Um, and the book is available from all uh, good stockists and online at places like Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and Books A Million, that kind of thing. And that's all of um, information's on the website. Okay. You can go to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 439, and I'll be sure to have the links there. So Kim, thank you so much for being a part of 40 Plus Fitness. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you again for being a part of 40 Plus Fitness Podcast. Now, don't forget to check out Eight Weeks to Wow at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 8W2WP. I'll get you to wow in eight weeks, guaranteed. Learn more at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 8W2WP. Next time on the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, we meet Dr. Barry Tan and discuss his book, The Truth About Vitamin E. Until then, have a happy and healthy week. <music>